Hello, everybody. My name's Lee, and I'm here with Mr. David Bowen from Hoshizaki Tech Support, and we're here to help you with technical training on KM float switch diagnostic and operations. Dave, I see we have a couple of different float switches here. Can you give me a rundown on how this float switch operates and what I'd be looking for as a symptom of a bad float switch? Sure. Um, the simplest explanation I can give is it's a low water safety. It just lets the board know when the tank is out of water. Does not control the water level, does not shut the water valve off. It's just got a connector, plugs into the K5 black connector on the circuit boards on all KMs. KM can be a KML, KMD, KMS. If it starts with KM, it has the same sequence. And the very first step of that sequence is the float switch. So as the machine starts to fill with water, it's important to note that you do have good water flow coming into the machine. Sure. So this float switch just monitors the water level, sits in the bottom of the water tank. As the water fills into the tank, float closes. So you can see it only has just a little bit of travel. About an inch of water in the bottom of the tank can close the float switch. The water level keeps coming in, the water keeps coming in, and the water level rises. And then after one minute, the board checks to see if the float is open or closed. If it's closed, it'll start the harvest cycle. If it's open, it just continues to fill. So after it goes into the harvest cycle, what's the float switch doing? So after one minute of fill time, the board checks the float. If the float is closed, meaning it's got an inch of water in the tank, right? then it will cycle into the harvest cycle, which it then brings on the compressor, the hot gas valve, and continues filling with water. Okay. So we fill with water. The float switch's job is not to tell it to stop filling with water. The float switch's job is the low water safety. It just tells the board when the tank is out of water. So there is a safety side to this. Yes, it will not let the pump run dry. You oh, don't good. want to cycle your pump without good. water. So at the point, the float switch opens will always be above the intake of the water pump. So what would be a symptom of a bad float switch? My machine is doing something. What would be a symptom of a bad float switch? So the float switch stuck in the open position or down would let you continue to fill with water. It would just fill with water constantly, would never stop the fill cycle because the board doesn't know there's water that's coming in until the float switch closes. Okay. So if the board thinks there's no water, it's gonna continue the fill cycle. There is no alarm for that. It just continues in the fill cycle. So continuously filling in the fill cycle, we have a bad float switch. And that would result in pushing water out the back drain through the overflow pipe. Okay. The overflow pipe, controls the water level, so you should always fill to the top of the overflow pipe before you begin a cycle. Okay. Now, if the float happens to be failed in a closed position, after one minute, the board's gonna start because it thinks there's water, whether there's water or not. Right. If the float is closed. So you're saying it's closed, this is in the up position. And the internal contacts are closed. Okay. So when the internal contacts are closed, it's routing that five volts DC back to the K5's connector. And then that the board sees that as a, enough water to start. And so it will start and cycle in the freeze. If it's stuck closed, it'll stay in the freeze cycle for over an hour. And then the board will see that as a, as a long freeze cycle. And if it does that two times back to back, two consecutive one hour freeze cycles gives you a three beep alarm. So there is an alarm associated with a possible bad float switch? Yes. So a three beep alarm would be a closed float switch. And the important note is if you have a, a three beep alarm, before you reset it, look into the water tank. If the tank is empty, you suspect your float switch to be the problem. So we've, we've talked about some of the things of the failures, what the machine looks like when it's in a failed uh, status of a bad float switch. How do you diagnose a bad float switch other than we know the machine is not operating properly? Well, if you have a voltmeter with continuity, then you can check by turning the meter on to the continuity mode. And then you'll notice when you touch your leads together, you'll hear the tone. So that's a closed circuit. So you take your float switch. Right now it should be open. So we touch the tabs and it shows open. And then you put it in the water closes every time you lower it down a little bit so when you lower it in it closes raise it up it opens if you do that 10 times and it opens and closes every time 
then you have a good flow switch. So why am I using water instead of just pushing it with my finger? It's a natural environment for the float. It's a, it reacts to water when it's in the machine, so we wanna test it in the water when we're doing our test. So inside that 10 or 15 times that you make that test, if it fails once, is it bad? Yes, it could be an intermediate problem with the okay. float. As long as you know it's clean, the stem is clean, and you do it over and over and over, so there's some little small contacts inside the stem and a magnet. You're talking right, right here? Yes, and then there's a magnet in this ring. Uh -huh. So the magnet is a very small magnet, so it doesn't take much to close that switch. Okay. So if the switch doesn't close, and one of the times you lower it in, water's in the float, and you do not hear that continuity, then you have a bad float. What if I, my ice machine is acting up and I suspect the float switch, but I don't have a volt ohm meter? What could I do then? Well, um, you, you would have to follow the sequence of operation. Hopefully you would have a way to know that it should fill with water for a minute and then start, okay? So if the compressor doesn't start, it just fills with water constantly then that's a good idea that your float switch is an issue. Okay. So you could unplug the, the K5 connector from the board, and then when you turn it on, we know after one minute, the board's looking for that K5 connector okay. to show a closed circuit that we have water. Okay. So if you unplug the float and it's just filling with water, make sure you wait one minute and jump the top two pins on the K5 connector and the board cycles, we know that the float switch is the problem. All right. Okay. Very seldom is it the board causes that problem. Just look at the wires on your float, yep. where these two wires are located when it's plugged in to the board. You know it's the top two pins see that. where yep. the wires are I located. See that. Yep. So you just take it off, put your jump there. Jump those two. And the board cycles normal after one minute. It cycles in the harvest, then your float switches. So the you're problem. simulating what a float switch would be doing by jumping it. Do the job of the float, and the board will react. So Dave, I see we have a couple of KM float switches here. One has a, a hole in this stem, and this one does not. Can you give me an explanation of what that looks like? Yes, uh, there's two different types of machines. We have our stackable KM machines and our modular machines. So the stackable units utilizing a dump valve, a check valve assembly, has a hose that comes over to the front side of this port that flushes the float out during the pump out. Okay. So that's in order to keep the, the boot on the bottom and the inside of the float flushed out. So the ones that don't have a hole, there'll be only one hose coming out of your float. This uh, float requires two hoses, and the only difference between the two and the way they operate is the hole. Okay. And the uh, other float that we have are mid-range KMs, like for instance, the KM520, KM660, uses a, a float switch that's mounted internally in the water tank. It has a keeper tab and a a uh, trigger I call it so it snaps into place into the water tank and we've had cases where people have put it into the tank and not listen for the click not hear it snap into place eventually it works loose and it might even be floating around inside your water tank causing you to just stay in the freeze cycle or a continuous fill cycle it's the same operation it's a low water safety it has a very little bit of travel there's a pin on the bottom that you can unclip to take the float off to clean the stem but otherwise, it's a pretty simple device. We've had a lot of good luck with this float switch. And the key point is when you put it back in, make sure you push it all the way down and listen for the click. So you find this one in the water reservoir. Yes. And you find this one where? It's outside near the water pump in the front of the unit right at the very front uh, near, next to the water pump. Thank you for joining us today for Hoshizaki's technical training on KM float switches, operations, and diagnostics. For cleaning instructions, you can click the link in the description below. Dave, thanks for helping us today. Thank you.